Hello, my loves. It's me, Ro. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to address something that came up in the comments of, I think it was my video where Adam and I were talking about how he is going to be as a father, if he's going to be more strict on a son because he has his own past and boys can get into more trouble. And I'll link that video there. But on there, Caitlin put an excellent comment about me, my former life, my advocacy. She hasn't seen me do too much advocacy since Adam's been home. Have I stepped away? Did I turn my back on it? Do other prison wives feel a certain way about it? I thought it was a great comment. It's something that I've been thinking about and wanting to address for a while, but she kind of prompted me to do it. And she was like, I hope that's not over overstepping my boundaries, which it wasn't whatsoever. So if you're interested in my life as a prison wife and how my channel started and evolved into life after prison, what I'm doing moving forward as far as supporting prison wives, advocating for prisoners, unfair sentencing, et cetera, while building my family and trying to move on from my past and Adam being inside. Do I want to move on? Let's see. Before we get started, look at this adorable baby Clausen. I'm in quarantine until July. And on the back, it says the same thing. And Kat added our little SPWF ribbon. I am obsessed. It's like literally the exact same thing on the back. I love it so much. So I think this one's getting released soon. I'll ask Kat and I'll let you know. Let's get to the nitty gritty of this video. I'm gonna be real, I'm gonna be raw. Are some prison wives getting in their feelings about me not doing too much advocacy? Unfortunately, yeah, I've had people leave my channel. I've had people tell me that I'm a traitor. I had one girl last week on Instagram tell me that my page is all about me. It's turned into me, me, me. All I ever did before Adam came home was talk about Adam. And all I ever do now is talk about my pregnancy. And she can't be pregnant at all. What is this lady doing? <laughs> that was weird. She can't get pregnant. So how dare I talk about it on my personal page? I blocked her. <laughs> I don't have time for that. Somebody came to my defense before I had a chance to block her and delete it. And she was like, are you kidding me? Like she's one of the most generous people under the sun, which touched my heart so much, but I'm not exactly sure what I'm supposed to talk about on my personal page besides my personal life. Okay. Strong Prison Wives and Families is still a nonprofit. It is still running. It is still thriving. I personally have stepped back a lot on the day-to-day -day responsibilities involved. We'll get to that in a minute. We have a great group of trusted volunteers who dedicate their time to keeping it running, to keeping it going, to making sure that the trolls stay away. People's questions are getting answered. In fact, Kylie is one of our volunteers. She developed this program based around the Combat Code called the Strong Focus Program. You're always welcome, if you're a prison wife or family member, to join the SPWF Invisible Shackles page on Facebook. We just ask that you're actually a prison wife or a prison family member because it's saved for that. A lot of times people come to gawk to use us as lab rats, research rats. It's not about that. It's about honestly offering advice and support to people who share our struggles. Okay, I went back to Kylie and I just asked her some clarifying questions and I'm glad I did. So here's the deal with the Strong Focus program. It is absolutely free to anybody who is a member of the Invisible Shackles page. You can watch it right there on the Facebook page. It's super duper easy. However, if you want to join on the Zoom specifically, then you can do that by becoming a Patreon for SPWF. There is a cost. It's about $3 a month. You could join just for the month, just to take the program, whatever works for you. The topic this month is physical health. So we're going to talk about what you put in your body, how you move your body, and then other health professionals and how they play into that. No judgment, nothing forceful. We have some professionals coming in who are going to talk about their experiences, give us advice. I'm so excited for it. And then the one next month is going to be about maintaining relationships while your loved one is away. And there are going to be so many more in the future. I'm so excited for it, but I wanted to come in and clarify because I did not do a very good job of it while I was in the car and distracted talking about advocacy and other stuff. Okay, enjoy the rest of the video. The reason I personally have moved, I don't even want to say moved away from advocacy because we are still advocating. There are certain laws that are so close to my heart. Adam left 2,000 or 3,000 brothers and sisters behind the wall. 924C will always 
be something that I am passionate about changing and we're fighting for it. There's so much going on right now behind the scenes. In fact, I just got off the phone with Adam who came out and of course he stepped into that role because he's the one that has the experience there. And I was always doing the advocating for that on his behalf on the outside because he couldn't. But now that he's here, he can talk the talk, he can walk the walk, he can speak to the Congress people, he could speak to senators without saying too much because I can't. There's a ton of stuff going on that we are both advocating for. And now I'm just kind of working by his side, kind of behind him because it's his thing. People can get as mad as they want that I have stepped away from being loud about every other advocacy thing in general for prison wives, but you have to think about it this way. No one is going to advocate for you or your loved one louder than you. No one's going to fight harder for you or your loved one or the unjust law that your loved one was sentenced under, the injustices in your state, things going on at their facility than you. You can't expect me to do that fighting for you. You have to be able to be the loudest voice for your incarcerated loved one. I will be glad to help in any way that I can in a grand and mass way, but I also have to get behind the things close to my heart. You can't get behind everything. If you try to get behind everything, really, you're getting behind nothing. You can't spread yourself that thin. Also, I've had people ask me to research certain things and laws and stuff like that, and I have to say, prior to Adam coming home, I had the time to do that. A lot of my work with advocacy, with strong prison wives, with all of that stuff, was kind of a coping mechanism for me. And that's not me just coming out now and saying it. I've said that in many, many videos in the past. It was a way for me to channel all of that stress, all of those emotions, all of the anxiety, the anger, the potential bitterness into something that could be constructive and positive for me. But it was a lot of work and dedication and there's so much to do and there's so much research. Well, now I'm on the other side of it where I'm trying to also live my life that I fought so hard to get. And now people are expecting me to invest all of those hours that I was doing around a full-time job around supporting my family, around my own personal commitments, my health, my wellness, strong prison wives and families, all of that. Now I have Adam here with me. Now I'm trying to live the life that I've been accused of being put on hold for so long and I'm getting shit for it. I'm getting hate for not doing it. I'm getting hate for doing it. Everybody has an opinion. I'm doing the best that I can, but you have to remember that along with being a prison wife comes a lot of stress and trauma. And we talk a lot about the trauma that comes along with post-incarceration syndrome for inmates when they come home, but nobody talks about the trauma we go through as wives. And I genuinely didn't realize how scarred I was until I'm living through it. There were so many times where we would be so close and everything would be pulled out from under me. So what did I do? I poured myself into researching the next best thing, the next thing that was going to help us. Why? Because I didn't want to have to deal with those emotions that were crushing. I have a video that I made that was talking all about what it's really like to be with a lifer. And I'm going to post it in the cards up there because I go more into that. But the thing is, I don't need to run away from my life anymore because I have the life that I fought for now. I just want to live for a minute. And I was talking to one of my best friends whose husband came home a few years ago. I was telling her how I felt sometimes things that are related back to prison wife life are almost triggering for me. And I feel guilty for that. But at the same time, like I don't have the capacity for it at some points. And she was like, you were the person who told everybody when Adam came home, you were going to take a year to do you guys do not feel one second of guilt. Do not feel one second of anxiety. Do not feel like you owe anybody anything for 11 years. You gave tirelessly you gave and you gave and you gave and you asked for nothing it's your turn now and I thought that was so sweet of her I forgot that I said that and she's like you've said that so many times on YouTube that nobody should be expecting you to do anything else now I don't think the responsibility should solely rest on my shoulders. So for the prison wives who are getting mad at me because I'm not fighting their fight, you need to look in the mirror. It's your turn. It's my turn to pass the baton. I am not saying that I'm putting it behind me whatsoever because I will continue to fight. But there are certain things that I'll continue to fight for. And there are certain things that I need you to fight for because it's my turn to live my life 
and I'm starting a family. And that's the next thing. I got pregnant almost immediately after Adam came home. We had a good six weeks together before I got pregnant. Along with becoming pregnant comes hormones. You're very, very, very sensitive. Everything in your body is on high alert. So things that feel good feel really good. And things that feel bad feel really bad. Things that trigger the trauma and bring me right back to prison wife life and all of the pain and the hopelessness at points that I felt. I was victim to things and I was vulnerable and people took advantage of that. People in positions of authority abused their authority. I had so much anxiety surrounding that. So much anxiety surrounding visit, phone calls, everything, him going to everything. But I always just kept it low level and just distracted myself with things doesn't mean that it didn't cause issue and in fact when you bury things it comes out later so now looking back it really hurts and it's really painful the other day Adam was talking about it was related to the conversation but he was talking about this one time that he was put in shackles and black boxed he was put in handcuffs with the black box over them because of his time and he's like nobody gave me any grace or anything like that because of my time they would make the cuffs extra tight they would make the shackles extra tight. They knew me, they knew I wasn't gonna try to go anywhere, but I have scars on my wrists and my ankles because of that. And as he was talking, I literally just started sobbing. And he was like, oh my God, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to make you emotional. The only thing I could get out was, I'm just so glad it's behind us and I don't know why I'm crying. I was like, blame it on the hormones. The thought of going back to that petrifies me, but you guys, he's a 213 year sentence and he's on probation for three years, two and a half years now because we've gotten through a half a year, thank God. But here's the thing, you don't think that it's always in the back of my mind that someone's gonna come knock down my door and try to take my husband away from me again. If he goes back there for some sort of bullshit violation that's for the rest of our lives that leaves me and his child alone out here without him for the rest of both of our lives I can't handle it emotions are extra emotional for me so I'm not just walking away on everybody I just need grace to discuss things right now that are happy that bring me peace that bring me joy so I can bring my baby boy peace and joy because he's feeling all of those hormones if I'm talking about all the stuff on the inside and all the trauma and all of the corruption and all of that stuff that raises negative emotions within me here's another example yesterday we were watching a show Adam's catching up on House of Cards on Netflix which is an older show but it's all about politics and like the extreme corruption in politics it's pretty good I have to say since we started watching it my anxiety has been back because it's about corruption in politics which we've dealt with corruption in politics and law for so many years well last night we were watching it usually i'll fall asleep or i'll play on my phone or i'll edit a video or i'll distract myself when it's on because negative emotions but i got into this episode last night this guy was doing something harmful to a female i don't want to say too much and get demonetized but he jumped out of someplace dark and it was meant to shock and scare the viewer I jumped so hard that I felt the baby start kicking aggressively in my stomach. And I was like, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry. We're okay. We're okay. You're okay. I'm sure I'm gonna get backlash from somebody somewhere here because I always seem to, but that's the truth. That's my life. That's where I am right now. I hope and I pray that I can inspire people on the other side of it. Not many people talk about the struggles and the trauma integrating and reintegrating life after prison for prison wives. And that's the part where I'm at right now. So I'm thinking after I have a little man and I can handle it a little bit more, I would like to branch out into that. So it would still be advocating for prison wives because majority of us will have a second chance. There are plenty of people who are fighting for lifers and fighting for people who don't have an outdate or really, really, really long astronomical sentences. And believe me, my heart is with you guys because that was me for so many years. But majority of prison wives will have their day someday down the road. So why not use my experiences while I'm going through them which has always been my channel, which has always been my message. Go through them first and then I share my experiences and what I learned and what I've been through and how I feel and how I came out the other side with you.
So why can't I do that and still be considered an advocate in helping prison wives and family members just on the other side of it, just in the reentry side of it and pass the baton for the unfair sentences and the stuff that needs to be advocated for aside from the corruption and the laws that are broken that are very, very close to my heart that I'm advocating my ass off for with Adam. Aside from that, I gotta pass it to somebody else. It's her turn. It's not on my shoulders. It's not all my responsibility. And it's not fair of anybody who's judging me for taking steps back to put that all on me. Why would you? I got really passionate and I didn't mean to, but there's that. Anyway, let me know what you think of this Baby Clausen merchant. Merchant, <laughs> merch. <laughs> oh my God. The Hot Mess Express. Choo choo. I love you guys. I hope this didn't cause you to leave me or whatnot, but I'm here for you. I love you. I'm doing my best, you guys. I don't know how to do this. I'm not perfect. I'm just doing it. I'm winging life. Isn't that life? If you liked this video and you're still here and you still want to support me, give this video a thumbs up because it just helps me out a ton in YouTube. And if you're not already subscribed and you'd like to, I would love that. Click the circle there or the red box below. And please don't forget to check out the strong focus program put on by strong prison lives and families volunteer kylie all of the information will be in the description box below and then we will also put it in the community tab and it's always accessible for you guys at invisible shackles spwf on facebook it is a great support group you will meet your soul sisters and your tribe there lord knows i did all right i'm babbling i love you guys and i'll see you in the next one Mwah.